Hi guys, today I'm going to go over how to create a customized plugin in Nagios Core. So Nagios is a great way of monitoring your services, but every IT infrastructure I ever worked for had a very specific item they were concerned about, either this filling up, network bandwidth, memory utilization, so many different ways to customize your environment. So I'm going to go over how to create a customized alert in Nagios Core so that it lets you know when your specific issues arise that you're most concerned about. Either if you have some kind of high availability and you're monitoring the heartbeat, something to that effect. So you can write scripts for anything that you need to monitor and have Nagios Core be alerted to that and then it can turn around and page you and notify you. So just keep watching and I'll show you guys how easy it is to do. The first thing to do is go ahead and log into your Nagios Linux client. And we're going to install um, the extended package enterprise Linux uh, repository. So this is just information about different extra products that can be installed using the yum command. So after that, we can go ahead and do a yum install Nagios hyphen plugins hyphen all. And after we install that, it's going to install a bunch of sample plugins um, that we can go ahead and take a look at. And some of them can be used in a conjunction with this customized script we're going to use. So the scripts that are installed, the plugins, they could be written in C, Perl, or a shell script. And the path that it's going to be installed on is user lib64 Nagios plugin. And you take a look at them here. There's a number of different scripts. Uh, some of them are written in C, some of them are Perl scripts. So you go ahead and take a look at that, some examples. And you can use those as well um, if you want to customize a certain type of search for users, logins, um, memory usage, network usage. You, you kind of use these uh, scripts as well if they work for you. Next, let's take a look at the xinid.com file. And we're looking for the NRPE configuration file for um, running services. And this is the um, daemon that will run when Nagios needs to get information from the client. It stands for Nagios Remote Plugin Executor. And there's a configuration file that it has a lot of customized settings like who's the Nagios log server, but also it has different commands that can be defined on the Linux client, on the Nagios client, that will um, run when called from the server. So we're going to take a look at that file. And there's some customization files. There's some, you can run sudo in there. But what we're going to do right now is going to, let's take a look at it. We're going to define a command in this file. So we edited this file before when we actually initially defined the Linux client in the Nagios configuration. And if you go towards the bottom, they have these commands. So here, there's some already examples here. So Nagios check user, and then it has some argument. And if you notice, if you go to your plugin folder, there's a check underscore users um, executable actually in that directory as well. So that's not a coincidence, that's actually by design. So we're going to go ahead and create our script in this Nagios plugin folder, and then we're going to go to our NRPE configuration file and define the command there. Um, this will allow us to run our customized plugin from the server, and then it defines it on the Linux client so it knows that the command is there and how to run it. So let's go ahead and start writing our script. Now this script can again can be written in many different languages. It just has to return a certain exit code. So um, that's actually in the comments if you want some more information about the exit code and I put some links in there. So we're going to create a shell script. But you can actually write this script in many different languages. Shell script, bash, C, Perl, Python, PHP, Ruby, Java. So no matter what language you are personally, individually comfortable with, you can write your customized uh, Nagios plugin to check whatever service you need. So that is a great feature that you have the option of writing in whatever language that you personally feel that you have the most experience in. But um, I'm going to go ahead and write this script. So this is one I found online. Um, I didn't put one of my scripts on here because mine are really customized. So this is a little bit more universal that allows people to check how many open files for a certain daemon that is running or a certain process or a user. So you could just kind of write how many files are being opened. So I'll put a link on below where I got this script so they get some credit. So again, this is just a regular shell script, nothing fancy. I'm going to make it executable, so make sure you check your permissions. Make sure it has the execute bit set as well. 
So we'll go ahead and issue that change mod command 755, pull permissions for the owner, read and execute bid for everyone else and group. And it gives it the execute bid so it needs that when it runs, it will have no issue running. Before going on, you should really test to make sure your script is working correctly. If there's any arguments that needs to be provided, you want to make sure if it has, needs any certain privileges like as you do, which I'll go over later on in this video, if it needs any root level access, then you should definitely take a look at that before continuing on um, because it will just create debugging a little easier. I like to do the sh minus xb so it gives me a list of all the commands and how they're being executed within my script. So that's what you just saw there. And that's a great way of debugging your code as well. So I find it very useful for shell scripting. Now we're going to take a look at the configuration file. And this configuration file we initially edited when we first set up the Linux client. It defines the server, but it has a number of other arguments that you could um, customize. And one of them is defining a command. So this is the command that will run on for your plugin, and so it's going to run your script. So the command is actually defining your script and any arguments to your script. So if you scroll down towards the bottom, you'll notice this is command, and then it has the name, right? We have and we'll put in the name of our script, check underscore file open, and then you just provide the path to your um, executable, either the C code or your shell script, um, must have the execute bit set of course, and then you just provide the entire path to your script, any arguments it might need. This will allow it to know that what is check file open, like what is that command, and this is where it's gonna tell it when the server says do this, check file, open, then it's going to know that this is what it needs to run. So that's why you're defining it here. It should take effect right away. This service does run with the xinitd service manager. So you don't have to restart anything. And if you want to go ahead and check to make sure, you can do a check config minus minus list. And you notice the xinitd base services and NRPE is listed as one of them and is listed as on. So that's just a quick way of double checking your how your services are running. Now let's go over to the Nagio server and we're going to log into the web interface. If you click on host, you can see our Linux client listed. And let's look at services. So this is a custom services on the current services on our Nagios Linux client. And this is where we're going to add another service to be monitored. So if the first thing you want to do is to go into the Nagia server configuration files. Now the first command we're going to take a look at is commands.conf. So we're going to user local Nagios etc. Again, this path could be different depending if you compile it or if you install the pre-compiled binaries. So this path, there are alternate paths that I'll put in the notes if you don't find it in this path. So depending on how you installed Nagios server, it will change. So let's go ahead and open the commands file, um, commands.conf. There's going to be a lot of content here, but what we're looking for is defining um, a command. Again, this is on the server side. So this is the way we're going to define our check file open command definition. Um, rename the command, and it's usually after the script. It doesn't have to be, but it usually is. So command underscore name, and we're going to go ahead and call it check underscore file open. The next argument we're going to specify is what the command line is that should run remotely. And since we are running remotely, we're actually going to call the NRPE, which is the Nagios Remote Plugin Executor. So since we're running our remote plugin that we customize, we're actually going to use check underscore NRPE, and then we're going to specify the host with the minus H, capital H, and then host address. So this will be passed from on the server side, so don't worry about how this argument is going to be defined. And then we're going to do a minus C for command, and we're going to specify the command that we defined on our Linux client, and we defined it as check underscore file open. So once we do that, you're going to be able to run the remote file open command right here and have it 
call that script that we wrote and it will return back through NRPE the results back to our Nagio server. The next configuration file we're going to edit is the client's configuration file. It should be in the same directory, but it doesn't necessarily have to be if you could define it to be somewhere else. So we're going to open up our client.conf file. Let's give client name. In my case, it's linuxclient.conf. And we're going to go to the section where you can define a service. Now, this is where the website's going to know what services to look for and actually try to determine its current status. So we're going to define a new one, and this is for our customized plugin called um, HTTP file open. So we're going to start out with the string define service with brackets. So open, close brackets. And these are, you can look at the previous example, like the one above it, to help you remember the different options. But we're going to specify the use, local service, host name, and this is the host name of our Linux client, check command. And again, this is what, the, what we just defined in our commands.com file. So again, this is where it has to match up. A notification enabled, so I want to be paged. And if this happens, and who to notify. So I'm going to define the Linux admins should be notified. Now you should be able to restart the Nagio server. So service Nagio is restart, and it will check the configuration files. If you had any syntax error, it would have notified you here uh, where the error is located, roughly about what line the error would appear. I didn't have any errors, so I just went ahead and restarted, but this is a good debugging location for any uh, errors in the Nagio's configuration. One of the things you'll possibly have to do is install NRPE on your server. Um, this will allow you to be able to test and see if your configuration is working correctly. Um, you can go ahead and download it from the source forage. Uh, I'll have a link below and you're going to actually compile it. So we're downloading the source code and we're going to put this on the Nagio server. It does need this to actually work successfully, I found. So I'm going to go ahead and download the source code. And just like any open source code, it's pretty much the same set of commands to run. So go ahead and compile the code. Um, we're going to extract it after we download it using tar. And we're going to go into that source code. And we're going to do a dot slash configuration. Then you can do a make and a make install. And this will go ahead and run through the entire installation. It's pretty straightforward. I'll have a link here on another uh, video that go, actually goes through it in slightly in more detail. Once you're able to do that, then we can go back to our web interface and take a look at our services listed. Now you see a new service listed, our HTTP file opened right there on caps. And if you notice, it has zero file open. So this is a place, if you have any issues viewing the output of your source code, your script correctly, it might have something to do with requiring that root level access I was mentioning before. There are many cases where you're running privileged commands. So we could go ahead and modify another configuration file, sudoer. The sudoer configuration is located under etc. And this file is a system file. It has nothing to do with Nagios. This allows um, a user, a non-root user, to run commands as root, as privilege. So if you have any commands in your script that needs to run at, with some sort of higher level access, this is how you would do it. So we can go ahead and open up that file, etc, sudoers, and we're going to go look for the line for root. So root, there's a root entry. So right after that, I'm going to put nagios. I'm going to say all, slash all, and then we're going to specify no password. So I want to say no password for these specific scripts. Uh, I'm going to put a path to the um, executable. So either the executable script or executable compiled code or system command. So anything you want to run with any privileges, you can also specify an entire directory to have privilege access. So we're going to go ahead and do that in etc sudoers. Lastly, you want to make sure you configured your sudoer sudoer compile correctly. So you're going to switch user to Nagios and run 
um, however you're going to test it. So I have my sudo command or sudo command within the script, but it doesn't actually have to be. You can run the entire script with sudo. Now if we go back to our Nagio server web interface and look at our services for our Linux client, you can see that our new service is now listed and it has the correct number of files being opened. So now at this point you're complete, you go ahead and change anything you want as far as notifications, but the script you see is working, it's outputting the correct exit code, and it's sending the information you required. So it's really a great feature, so go ahead and give this a try in your environment. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. Subscribe to get updates, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Again, it could be C, it could be Perl. It probably can be Python as well. I have to double check on that, and I'll put it in the comments below.